Well, it's time now for a look at today's French front pages and indeed all of French, uh, today's French newspapers with our press reviewer, Nicholas Rushworth. Nicholas, thank you for joining us. Uh, and you're going to start off with uh, Liberation, the left-wing paper. Hello to you this Monday, Lorna, and I'm going to start out, start out with not Liberation, in fact, but Le Figaro. I'll come to Liberation. It's just straight Sorry after. But that. Le Figaro, <laughs> this caught my eye. It's this two-page spread in Le Figaro, which is um, looking at the intervention in Mali and a war that the paper is describing as invisible. Now, all the papers are expressing concerns about the dangers for French nationals in parts of Africa and not least um, hostages being held. Now, um, what's happened? And over the weekend, Friday and Saturday, is reports of two men um, being killed and um, the French uh, government saying nothing, no comment, um, and the paper in its editorial is arguing that is a risk. It could be seen here in France and abroad as a form of censorship. OK, and, and that also a concern for Liberation. Well, as you were saying, Liberation 2 covering this, their headline here, I can show you very quickly the front page there, uh, La Guerre au Tournant and the War at a Turning Point. Now, it has a picture of the two men um, concerned, Algerian commanders of Akim, Mac, Acme rather, uh, Abu Zaid and Mokhtar Belmokhtar. Um, Belmokhtar, of course, was um, uh, a breakaway from um, that group in, um, in Central Africa. Now, the paper in its editorial is emphatic about um, events since the report of the killing of these two men, saying it does not in any way accept the French government's silence. Francois Hollande owes the French explanations about the Mali mission. It says he needs to clarify what the intervention in Mali is all about, aside from the fight against terrorism. And that paper, too, warning that f the French army could get too drawn in and become too associated with the Malian army, which, of course, is being accused of atrocities. OK, and, and up and uppermost in people's minds, meanwhile, here in France itself, are those French hostages being held uh, in uh, Mali and other parts of Africa? Well, in all, there are 15 uh, French hostages in Africa. And, of course, that is the greatest number of hostages being held of any nation in the world. So, of course, a big concern. And, and uh, aujourd'hui en France, Le Parisien is taking uh, that up there. You can see the headline, L'attente est insupportable. The waiting is unbearable. The interviews with relatives of those um, hostages um, are very moving. You, the people are saying they are living moment by moment. The silence is deafening for them. Um, they just do not know how to interpret these latest no comment um, positions taken by the French government. Mm. OK, well, you're going to stick with Aujourd'hui en France uh, for this next story. Uh, they're look, taking a look at smoking. Well, Aujourd'hui en France um, has that uh, concerns about the family's anxieties on its front page. And also there you can see a young woman smoking. Now, what is she smoking? Um, maybe it's an electronic cigarette. If you look closer, you can see it's not actually a genuine one. Now, of course, with the cold weather, I've noticed personally that walking through the streets of Paris, that Parisians seem to be smoking even more than usual. <laughs> um, they do smoke quite a lot. Now, now, um, it turns out, according to Aujourd'hui en France Le Parisien, that at least 500,000 French people have turned to e-cigarettes, electronic cigarettes, in recent months. And um, that technology involves converting liquid nicotine into a vapour. Um, they're battery-powered and they don't use tobacco or have any of the chemicals in uh, the usual cigarettes. And the appeal, apparently, according to the paper for the French, is that, in fact, austerity, of course, they're four times cheaper. So mm -hmm. people, you can see, they're queuing up to buy them. Um, <laughs> and that's obviously to do with price. And to end, Lauren, I just want to go to a story that caught my eye in the Huffington Post. And it is about the Harlem Shake, which is the <laughs> dance craze online, which we you can't, can't get away from. It, can you? It's everywhere. <laughs> and no other than the UMP youth. Now, the no. UMP is not the hump, of course. It's the opposition <laughs> uh, conservatives here in France. And here you can see them um, giving their dance a chance uh, <laughs> the uh, young guys perhaps not oh, so brilliantly dear. strutting their stuff there, <laughs> doing the Harlem Shake of course we'll see more and more of the Harlem Shake the, the comment in the Huffington Post uh, on this uh, idea that the young guys can do this was well they look totally ridiculous and isn't that a good thing because the ump shake is a good thing for a party that has so many leadership wrangles. I was going to say I would have liked to have seen those two leadership candidates taking part in that maybe it could have brought them together a bit more thank you very much indeed Nicholas for that look at today's French papers.